All right, good afternoon. Uh, this is section 4-3, uh, mixed numbers and improper fractions. What I want you to do is go ahead and hit pause and copy down these notes, and then we'll explain further. All right, it says mixed numbers indicate the sum of a whole number and a fraction. For example, this is the whole number, okay? Sum meaning, again, adding. So we're going to add the whole number plus the fraction that's remaining, okay? That is our example of what a mixed number is. And it's mixed because, again, whole numbers and fractions. It is made up of, when we talk about the fraction, a numerator and a denominator. Numerator, again, meaning top number on a fraction. That is the 3. And then the denominator, meaning the bottom number in a fraction which is the 5. Okay, um, I've had a lot of students use, um, for example, Notre Dame for numerator, denominator. Uh, that's one way they've talked about that. I've also um, discussed it as using the N meaning north, which is always up, and D for down. Um, just some different ways to remember uh, the numerator and denominator proper fraction, that would be the numerators are less than the denominator, okay? That means, again, the numerators are less than the denominator, so the top number is smaller than the bottom one. And an improper fraction, which is the not the proper way of writing it, means that the numerators are greater than or equal to the actual um, denominator, so the 5 is larger, um, the top number is larger than the bottom. Okay, that is the improper way of writing it. This is the proper way. So let's look at the next slide. And I want you to go ahead and hit pause for this as well and copy these notes down. So go ahead and do that. Now it says for mixed numbers to convert them to an improper fraction. So these are my mixed numbers. This is what I start with. And what you would do is take the denominator times the whole number. Okay, this is how many parts it takes to make one whole. So if we've got four holes, then we multiply 5 times the 4, which is 20. That's this part. Then you're going to take that answer and add it to the numerator, because that's how many parts are remaining in that fraction. There's only two out of a possible 5. So then we end up with a total of, and that's when we add these together, 22 and the denominator always stays the same because they are saying again that it takes five parts to make one whole so that is never going to change and you can think of it as a, as a pizza if you've got five different parts there's five of them that those slices are never going to change you're still always going to have five of them okay and for every one of these holes, there's five slices. So that's a total of 20. That's why we take 5 times 4, which is 20. And then 2 remaining means that we had two of these slices um, that had, um, that are still remaining. Okay? Or that are shaded, however you want to look at it. Okay? So that's why we add the 20 plus the 2 to get 22 total slices out of a possible five that makes one whole pizza. And we're going to do some more stuff with that in class as well. The next one says improper fractions to mixed numbers. So now we're going the other direction. We're going from this back to this. And since we have um, the total number of slices that it takes to make one whole pizza, which would be four whole slices, we're trying to find out how many whole denominators go into the numerator? So how many of these holes go into this? Okay, And so we divide. Top number always goes in our division box. That's the first number we say in the fraction, and it's the first number we say when we talk about dividing. It's always the inside number we say first. So when we divide, 4 goes into 13 three times, and we get 12. And then we subtract, and we get one remaining, and that is how many slices are remaining 
out of a possible four. So that's where we get three holes and then one out of a possible four slices remain. Okay, you're going to hear myself and Mrs. Sylvius talk about slices of pizza a lot. I use it a ton in, in my classroom. So look to hear that analogy. Now what I want you to do is use those notes for the first part um, and go ahead and hit pause and solve this problem for writing each number as an improper fraction. All right, so to solve this, again, we're taking the denominator times the whole number, which is 8 times 4, which equals 32. And then we're going to take that answer of 32 and add it to the numerator. So now we're going to add 1 to this, which is going to equal 33. And the number of slices for that pizza are never going to change. It's going to stay 8. So 33 eighths is my answer. Now let's go ahead and hit pause and solve this. So we take 3 times the 5 which is 15 and then we're gonna add the numerator which is 2 to my 15 which gives me 17 for the numerator and the denominator always stays the same. Again, if you're having questions on this, take note of it so that you can ask further about it tomorrow. Now go ahead and hit pause and do letter C. So again, we're going to take 7 times 4, the denominator times the whole number, which equals 28, and then we're going to add my numerator, which is 5, to the 28, which gives me a total of 33 for a numerator and the denominator is 7. Again, the denominator always stays the same. Now we're going to go the different direction where it says write each improper fraction as now a mixed number or whole number. Sometimes it could be a whole number as well. So let's go ahead and hit pause and solve this. Now to solve this, again, we're trying to find out how many denominators go into my numerator. So we simply divide. Top number goes in our division box. So 31 divided by 6. How many 6's in 31 would be 5. So we subtract 30 from 31 to give me 1, maybe. And then uh, we are not going to add decimals, we're not going to add zeros to this, just our remainder is how many slices are left over out of a possible six. Okay, that's what's remaining. This is why we say all along there is no such thing as a remainder. This is why. Because one, it could be one out of ten, it could be one out of a million, it could be one out of any number. Um, we need to know how many exactly it is out of, and there's a possible six. So my answer again is 5 and 1 sixth. Now go ahead and hit pause and solve this. So now we have how many 4's can go into 8. Okay, A lot of you eventually are going to get to the point to where you're going to be able to do this mentally. And that is where we want you to go with it eventually. Today, again, take the numerator, which is 8, divide it by the denominator, and how many 4's go into 8. 2, which is 8, subtract, nothing left over, so the answer is just 2, okay? We don't need to write 0 fourths, okay? We already know there's nothing left over. Let's get rid of that and leave it a whole number itself, okay? You'll want to do that for many reasons, and you'll begin to see why in the future um, to be able to simplify these fractions um, to make sure that they do not have um, extra on the, the actual problem itself because when we go to start to add and subtract and multiply and divide these numbers you don't want to have all this extra stuff on there it's just going to complicate things further okay now go ahead and do letter C so again we're going to take 50 as our numerator divide it by the denominator how many eights go into 50 and there are going to be six, 
which is 48, and we subtract and get 2. And then what's remaining? Well, 2 out of possible 8. Now, one thing you always need to make certain of is that it is in simplest form. And we have not really talked about that much today. Um, we are simplifying them, but in this case, we need to reduce this further, the fraction itself. And we've done this before, um, so we're going to use those same rules that we learned um, earlier this week and see the greatest common factor between these two numbers is 2. So we're going to divide both of them by 2. 6 is going to stay the same. We're just worried about the fraction itself. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. So 6 and 1 fourth is my final answer. If you have any other questions about this, again, please continue to take notes on that and uh, bring that to class tomorrow, and we can discuss it further and clarify any of those questions. Have a great evening, and we will see you tomorrow.